So, what to talk about first, paintball-wise. Um, ever since getting down here to college, I've really started getting back into the paintball world. Things are going pretty good. Um, have some guys, we've started a team, been getting around to some tournaments. I got some footage of that. That tournament had its ups and downs. There was, you know, it was supposed to be a beginner's level tournament. Simple, no problem. And one group of people had to show up and mess it up for everybody else. You know, it happens. Um, you know, I could go more into depth, but it's not really worth it. It's in the past. It just sucks when people, you know, people decide that they need to come beat up on a bunch of inexperienced or, you know, even experienced people that just haven't played a lot of tournaments or speedball come up and beat up on them because if they go play people that are, you know, just as experienced or anything as they are, they get their asses handed to them. And I know for a fact that's what's been going on because the field that I work for has a team and that team has been playing in the same brackets as the team that showed up to this beginner's tournament and that team that showed up at the beginner's tournament, the Ruthless, they show up in any D5 events or anything, they get absolutely blown to pieces. Against guys that I've played against on the speedball field, so that's, I, I mean, no excuse. Um, we had a very inexperienced player playing snake side. Things didn't go as planned. And, uh, Things happened. Uh, we had some miscommunications with captains. I was apparently the on-field captain. We had another guy acting as the sideline captain type deal. It just didn't go well. It, it should have been one captain, period. And it, it didn't work out, regardless. Um, on top of that, yeah, been going to several different fields. That uh, game was down at Jaeger's Subsurface uh, in Kansas City. Awesome field. Open year-round, to my knowledge, because they do have an indoor facility in a cave. Dude, the weather in there, oh, me being from Minnesota, when I can go play in 65, 70-degree weather inside of a cave, dude, I was so happy that day. Awesome freaking day. Um, on top of that, uh, I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska right now. We got CJ's Paintball. That's where I'm working. Great field. Um, got great people out there. We, you know, really try to work with the public as much as we can. You know, try to give people the best service possible. Love to see some people out there. If anybody's, you know, fans of my channel and sees this, say hi when you come out. Uh, there's also Mad Cow Paintball over closer to Omaha. Um, don't remember what town it's actually considered to be in. They've got a great field too. Um, they have some great events, great stuff. Um, you know, uh, the one thing I will say, I am a big fan of the GOG Enemy. Um, I've always kind of been a fan of Smart Parts guns to an extent. <laughs> um, I've put a lot of money into smart parts hardware over the years. Yeah, the uh, the amount of smart parts hardware I've bought over the years is beyond what I ever should have spent. Um, I love smart parts guns. They always shot great when they worked. <laughs> as soon as anything went wrong with that gun, um, trust me, I put plenty of money into them trying to fix it. You were better off taking that gun and using it as a paperweight selling it to another guy for parts, um, hanging it up on the wall as a monument to, yeah, I had this gun, it was an awesome gun, but uh, it, you know, this part broken, not taking the time and the money to hunt that down and fix it, I'll buy a new gun. <laughs> Seriously, the smart parts, that was, you were better off, huh, it broke, okay, buy a new one. Um, 
you know, ions were a very popular gun for a long time. They honestly weren't. They weren't that great. They were okay. Um, once they came out with the XE model, like that, that really improved a lot. But smart parts really at the end there really started putting out some better guns. Um, I think if they would have had those, you know, production thoughts in mind in some of their earlier guns, I think they would have, you know, had a lot better shot at staying open. I mean, the SP1, the Vibe, even the SP8, like, okay, yeah, it was heavy, but there was no other Milsom type gun on the market really that looked like it, especially for the cost you were getting it for. Um, you know, whatever. So GOG comes back on the scene. They're still making stuff. Um, obviously you got SP still making the Shocker. I'm not even going to get into that right now. We'll do that in a separate video. Um, rental guns at Fields. Honestly, I know Tipmans have been the standard for a long, long time. Gog enemies are really putting up a solid, in my opinion, a really solid fight to, you know, compete in that bracket. Um, God, they're so simple. I mean, so simple. Uh, I mean, about the only thing that can really go wrong, unless you actually blow out the regulator or anything, um, is you blow an O-ring. That, or you happen to, you know, cross thread a bolt and strip out a bolt. That's literally the only couple things that can really go wrong with the gun that are going to be any major problem. At the, I mean, even at the end of the day, if you really wanted to be maintaining your guns, you know, keeping your maintenance on high, so much easier to take that cog enemy, unscrew the bolt out the back, lube the O-rings, check them, make sure they're all good, stick the bolt back in the gun. You're done. You are literally done at that point. And for the fields that are doing 50 and 68 caliber, they have a 50 cal version. So simple. It's the only thing about CJ's. We're using Tipman FT12s. They work. They're good guns. They're robust. But when something does go wrong, it takes forever to pull these guns apart and fix them. GOG enemies should be the new rental standard, really, over Tipman's, at least in my opinion. Um, especially since I let a guy borrow my Tipman the other day, projects, my Project Silvo, and uh, he ended up falling and slamming the gun down on the ground and busted the airline clean off, sheared it off at the ASA. I don't even, I mean, the freaking Titman. That doesn't happen, but it did. And now I have a gun that I was planning on selling that I gotta either put money in it to fix it or sell it for less. Sucks, right? Anyway, paintball down here is doing pretty good. It's great. Um, you know, you're gonna be seeing hopefully a lot of paintball stuff coming from my channel. And uh, hopefully some of my other teammates are going to have stuff on their channels coming up as well. So keep updated and uh, see what kind of info we can get you.